The 2023 MLS regular season has officially come to a close, meaning it's time for end of season awards. And the coach of the year this season in MLS is under particular scrutiny because there are so many great candidates. So let's outline the top five candidates for the MLS coach of the year and determine ultimately who deserves to win that award. Starting with who I would consider to be the three long shots, or we're going to call them the outsiders. It is first up, Orlando City's manager, Oscar Pareja. And Orlando City actually didn't start out this year too hot. They got knocked out in the round of 16 of the CONCACAF Champions League to Tigres and had a off and on sort of start to the beginning of the MLS season. And that wasn't really good for Oscar Pareja, who had high expectations on his team of very talented players early on this season. In fact, in the early part of the year, he was actually on the hot seat for a little bit. But obviously, he quickly turned that around into the best season in Orlando City history with 63 points earned in MLS this season. Ultimately, obviously, he's done a fantastic job reaching those expectations and even exceeding those very high expectations that we said he had at the start of the season. But, of course, he does have a good team. And that is probably the biggest distractor from Oscar Perea because those expectations were high for a reason. He has a good team. Now, I will say the best argument for Oscar Perea is actually that Orlando has the lowest guaranteed compensation for any team in the league. That means they have the lowest wage bill, the lowest payroll in all of MLS. And really, that actually says more about the Orlando City front office and how great a job that they have done assembling such a quality team with such a low payroll. Hey, are you looking for MLS content on YouTube? If so, this is the channel for you. So hit that subscribe button below and join the Upper 90 community. Thanks so much and back to the video. Up next, though, will be Wilfred Nancy, the head coach of the Columbus crew, who undoubtedly is now one of the best coaches in the league at this point. And if you had an award for coach of the year over the past two years, in a two-year period rather than one, obviously, he would be the guaranteed winner of that award. Because last year, he took Montreal team, who had finished 10th in the East, and got them all the way to 2nd in the East. Honestly, the fact that Jim Curtin won the coach of the year last year was a disgrace in my opinion. You look at Montreal now, they are back in 8th place. And even further, Chirondolo uh, from LAFC should have won that award too ahead of Curtin. But that's a whole other video. Focusing on Wilfred Nancy, uh, unfortunately last year does not matter for his campaign this year, but what he did this year is nearly as impressive. Columbus missed the playoffs last season, yet they finished third this year. Like Pareja, it wasn't smooth sailing for Columbus who were learning Nancy's system early in the year, as he, of course, was appointed right before this season. They had mistakes playing out of the back, they conceded a lot of goals, but they stayed committed to the game model of Wilfred Nancy and eventually scored a lot of goals as well. As the season went on, they just got better and better and will be a dark horse contender in this MLS playoffs. It will be, unfortunately, though, for a Wilfred Nancy, close but no cigar once again in the Coach of the Year race. Last but not least in our outsiders for the Coach of the Year race will be Houston Dynamo's Ben Olsen. Unfortunately here, Houston's run to the U.S. Open Cup final, winning that, of course, against Inter Miami, will not factor in to the MLS Coach of the Year debate because it is a separate competition. That said, though, Olsen's situation is unique. In D.C., it was difficult for him with the team that he was given, but Houston saw something in Ben Olsen. They brought him in, and he also had a shaky start to the season, as you would expect a brand new coach to have with his new team, but he made a lot of brilliant adjustments throughout the season, including getting the best out of designated player Hector Herrera. After an underwhelming first season in MLS, Herrera has been everything that Dynamo fans have dreamed of this season, and a lot of that has been because of Ben Olsen. They have a fantastic relationship, despite not speaking each other's language. 
As a result, that shaky start turned into consistent performances with only one loss since League's Cup. That is the past 13 games in all competitions, the past 11 games in MLS play. This team was penultimate in the Western Conference last season and is now a playoff dark horse. So to me, Ben Olsen has done an incredible job. But as amazing as those three coaches have been, however, the award will be decided between the top two coaching candidates this season. And one of those is FC Cincinnati's Pat Noonan. Of course, the Supporters' Shield winners who made their best season in club history. What an amazing year they had all around, even while losing Brenner for a club record 10 million fee early on in the season. They seem to get better after that. For many, that would earn him this award, and it very well may. But for me, expectations matter. And what Pat Noonan and Chris Albright have done over the past two years is nothing short of historic. But the expectations were for them to win trophies. Many experts before the season even predicted Cincinnati to win the Shield. So while their season was sensational, it wasn't that far over expectations. Pat Noonan did what he was supposed to do, even though those expectations were very high, and he should be given all the credit in the world for accomplishing those very, very difficult, lofty goals. However, when it comes to Bradley Carnell, the head coach of the St. Louis SC expansion side, on the other hand, it is the complete opposite. St. Louis obviously won the West after being predicted by nearly everyone, except me of course, to finish bottom of the Western Conference table. As an expansion team, nobody gave them a chance, yet they produced the second best expansion season ever in MLS history with 56 points. And really, the way that Cornell has used every piece of his roster to get the best out of the team is what's so incredible to me. Yes, they have stars like Zhao Klaus or Edward Leuven, but it's players like Adeneran, Stroud, Giochini, Markinitz, and Asiel Jackson that are the most impressive aspects of Carnell's coaching for me. Whether a star or not, Carnell's got the absolute best out of every player on his team to outperform expectations in a mind-boggling fashion. Oh yeah, and he did it with the third lowest payroll in all of MLS. No debate for me, Bradley Carnell should be the MLS Coach of the Year. But everybody has their own opinion. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Should it be Carnell? Should it be Noonan? Should it be one of the outsiders? Let me know, and thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please drop a like and subscription down below. It really, really helps out the channel. I will see you next time.